Octopuses are eaten by people around the world. While not considered a staple like fish, potatoes, rice, or meat, they are considered a delicacy. Demand for octopus is increasing every year, with global trade now exceeding $2.8 billion annually. It's no wonder that there's interest in farming them. The idea was followed by real-world examples. In 2019, Spain and Portugal were curious about octopus farming, and efforts to establish farms were made in Italy and Australia. Successful octopus breeding is already happening on one farm in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, and similar attempts are underway in other Latin American regions, including Chile. China and Japan hopped on this trend, too. The production can still be considered experimental because people are testing different methods in onshore tanks, in open ocean mesh enclosures, and on ranches where wild octopuses are raised in captivity. Why not just pick one method? Well, it turns out that octopus farming is not as simple as it seems. Efforts in Australia, Mexico, Hawaii, and Japan have so far failed to address many of the challenges faced by these new farmers. They have to deal with high mortality rates and a number of other challenges. Even just catching octopuses in the wild and then raising them in captivity is hard due to aggression, cannibalism, and constant self-harm among the octopuses. It's still completely unclear how to fix the situation, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. In 2017, the Japanese fishing giant Nisui announced a breakthrough. They had successfully closed the life cycle of octopuses, meaning they could now breed successive generations in captivity. This meant there would be no need to catch octopuses in the wild anymore. Commercial production was expected to kick off in 2020, but well, as you might have guessed, nothing happened. The company's still in the research and development stage. Understanding the challenges of farming octopuses is actually pretty simple. Octopuses aren't just delicacies, they're creatures that live solitary lives, aren't very social, but are very territorial. They're particularly ill-suited to captivity and mass production because they're smart and darn curious. Octopuses are highly intelligent and complex creatures that thrive in stimulating and dynamic environments. Unlike farms, which typically offer monotonous conditions, octopuses require stimulating surroundings for maximum success. In farm conditions, octopuses can experience disappointment and boredom, leading to aggression, illness, and even death. These creatures can escape from intricate enclosures, use extreme camouflage methods to evade predators, use tools, pick locks, raid lobster traps, and much more. Now imagine them confined to a pen. Some studies suggest that octopuses have comparable intelligence to cats, animals that most people consider cute companions. How ethical is it to keep such intelligent creatures on farms? Experts say it's probably impossible to set up a farm where octopuses won't suffer, partly because they don't fare well in groups and become highly stressed when crowded together. Then there's the concern of them eating each other, or even themselves, which clearly isn't great for breeding any creature. Keeping octopuses separate from each other is important, and they need to be placed in large tanks where they won't get bored. It's hard to imagine how much money would be needed to set up such a farm. Animal rights activists believe that any farming activity trying to meet the needs of octopuses and provide them with familiar living conditions would be too expensive to make any profit. Aside from ethical concerns about raising highly intelligent beings on an industrial scale, there are also environmental issues to consider. Octopuses are carnivorous animals, relying on fish protein and fat as their main food source, which must be supplied from somewhere. If there are too many octopuses in captivity, it'll put additional pressure on wild fish populations, which are already struggling. Currently, about one-third of the world's fish catch is used as feed for other animals, with around half of that going to aquaculture. Since octopuses consume roughly three times their weight over their lifetime, their diet would impact, well, basically everything. This could pose a significant problem, especially since most animals raised on farms are herbivores. Feeding herbivores is much simpler, but octopuses are predators. When you think about the food chain and visualize it as a triangle, predators always sit at the top, above their prey. They are typically far fewer in number than their prey, such as fish in this case. This balance is crucial for maintaining the ecosystem. For the farm to be profitable, we need a large number of octopuses. Therefore, the farmers will artificially increase their population. To feed the octopus farm, they'll have to either grow fish separately for them or catch more fish. Aquaculture is already causing significant harm to the environment, and commercial octopus farming is likely to further damage local ecosystems. Let's be honest, potential farmers would probably turn a blind eye to this if it weren't for other issues. Problems with octopuses start as soon as they hatch. The delicate hatchlings rely solely on live prey and require a carefully controlled environment. Interestingly, 
Up until now, the breeding of octopuses has mainly involved catching young individuals in the wild and raising them to a marketable size. Baby octopuses are incredibly tiny, less than 1.3 inches in size when they hatch, and they spend quite a long time in a planktonic stage of life. However, nobody has managed to successfully raise them in captivity to a decent number yet. Even though researchers are trying different diets, it seems like the baby octopuses just don't want to grow in captivity. Currently, there are no regulations in the EU protecting octopuses raised on farms. Existing animal welfare laws don't cover invertebrates. It's hard to imagine two decades ago anyone thinking they needed protection at all. However, attempts to commercially farm octopuses continue. One of these farms is planned for the Canary Islands, Spain, described as one of the most controversial endeavors globally. In 2021, plans for the world's first commercial octopus farm were revealed. According to documents obtained by BBC, Nueva Pescanova intends to house the farm in a two-story building. The farm is expected to produce 3,000 tons of octopus meat annually, which would mean keeping around a million octopuses. The company plans to build a facility in the port of Las Palmas on the island of Gran Canaria. The location was chosen because of the temperature of the surrounding waters, as the farm will use local seawater. While the exact opening date is unclear, Nueva Pescanova hoped that a construction permit would be granted by the end of 2023. If this happens, work will start soon afterward and is expected to take about two years. According to available data, the farm is estimated to cost around $71 million. As part of preparing for the farm construction, the company is currently breeding and raising octopuses in aquariums at a research center in northern Spain. These creatures will be transported to Las Palmas, and upon arrival, they'll need about one and a half years to reach the right age. In short, the first octopuses from the farm won't hit the market until 2027. According to the blueprints, octopuses will be kept in aquariums alongside about a thousand other animals. In the wild, octopuses mostly lead solitary lives, hunting and swimming solo in the ocean. Due to the conditions they're planned to be kept in, the mortality rate as forecasted by Nueva Pescanova, is expected to be 10 to 15 percent. Yes, they've already factored that in. However, octopus experts are convinced that keeping them in such conditions would cause them significant distress. Octopuses simply aren't suited for intensive mass production. Their natural habitat is in the wild. Also being carnivorous, they pose risks to the environment, possibly causing overfishing and other related issues. Certainly, many argue that there's no ethical way to raise any animal regardless of its intelligence or natural behavior, especially when it ultimately ends up slaughtered. However, experts note that when it comes to octopuses, the situation is particularly hard. Octopuses are known for their remarkable intelligence, curiosity, and propensity to explore, manipulate, and control their environment. In mass production settings, it's likely that sterile, controlled, and barren conditions will be created, which could cause suffering for these animals. Nueva Pescanova plans to keep them under constant lighting for 24 hours during the breeding season to speed up the process, despite octopuses naturally preferring to spend most of their time in darkness. The whole existence will culminate in freezing to death. The plan is to immerse octopuses in tanks containing 132 gallons of water with ice at temperatures ranging from 27 to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. According to experts, this will result in a painful, stressful, and slow death which has been scientifically confirmed. However, there are no laws regulating even this aspect of octopus farming, meaning companies can choose for themselves, no matter how inhumane it may be. All of this is happening due to the constantly growing demand. Currently, about 350,000 tons of these creatures are harvested from the ocean each year. This exceeds the catch volume in 1950 by more than 10 times. According to the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, from 2010 to 2019, the value of global octopus trade increased to $2.72 billion from $1.3 billion. Meanwhile, the catch during the same period increased by only 9%. Octopuses are simply becoming more expensive. People are driven by the desire to maximize profits. With decades of academic research, Nueva Pescanova surpassed rival companies in Mexico and Japan. When the farm is opened, it'll be a significant breakthrough for the company. However, according to environmentalists, it could also mark the beginning of a catastrophe. Nueva Pescanova claims their octopuses peacefully coexist in tight quarters under conditions considered unacceptable, showing no signs of aggression. 
zero cannibalism, everything within acceptable limits. However, experts doubt these claims as they contradict everything we know about octopuses. Representatives from Nueva Pescanova have an explanation. Their octopuses are completely unique and don't behave like wild ones because they were raised in captivity. Not just raised, but they're actually the fifth generation, which is why their behavior is totally different. That sounds odd. But hold on, you haven't heard how Nueva Pescanova hacked the octopus reproduction system. In the wild, octopuses reproduce just once, then stop hunting and waste away. The last weeks of a female's life are spent tending to eggs, while males die even sooner. However, representatives from Nueva Pescanova claim that with careful feeding and perfect conditions, the female stays alive. They even plan to re-fertilize the revived female, bred in captivity. This is an unprecedented situation that has never been documented before. The question is, how true is this claim? When it comes to really big money, people tend to twist information. And you can really make quite a profit off octopuses if you ignore all those ethical and environmental issues. Just imagine, these creatures gain 5% of their weight every day. Of course, they're great for farming, especially since an octopus can grow by 8 pounds in a year. The situation is concerning not only environmentalists and animal welfare advocates, but also fishermen who catch octopuses in the wild. Fishermen fear they won't be able to compete with industrial agriculture, and large companies clearly won't care about their problems. Restaurant owners who buy octopuses from these fishermen are also not happy. There's another point worth considering that questions the rationale behind these farms. As mentioned earlier in the video, octopus is a delicacy. People don't consume octopuses because they have no other options for sustenance. It's not like octopuses are a cheap protein source or anything of the sort. So what's the point of farming them when there isn't a real demand? People's craving for octopus meat is what drives the demand for these creatures. However, if governments don't prohibit such farms, they will inevitably emerge. It's just a matter of time. Owners won't consider how much suffering octopuses will endure or the negative impact on the environment and small businesses. There's high demand, prices are steep, and catching octopuses in the sea is becoming increasingly challenging to meet that demand. By the way, there's a move in the USA to ban octopus farming. Washington State might pass a bill soon, and California and Hawaii are also considering similar bans. Thanks should be given to the uproar surrounding the construction of Nueva Pescanova's farm. Nevertheless, it's undeniable that people will continue to consume octopuses. Currently, over 100 species of these creatures are harvested from the wild. The highest demand comes from Korea, Japan, Spain, Portugal, Greece, and Italy. In 2022, Morocco became the world's largest supplier of octopuses, accounting for 20.9% of the market share. Spain was the biggest buyer of octopuses, spending $645 million on them. Interestingly, Spain itself exports octopuses and made $408 million from these exports in the same year. It's a fascinating cycle of octopuses and millions. South Korea imports 16.1% of all octopuses, and it's where they prepare a dish called sanakji. Essentially, sanakji isn't just raw octopus, it's practically a live octopus, sliced into tiny pieces and served immediately to guests. Many Koreans also eat the whole octopus by wrapping it around chopsticks and popping it into their mouths like a giant sushi roll. Eating a live octopus, even when sliced, requires extreme caution as each piece must be chewed many, many times. Why? Well, because the octopus continues to squirm. Octopuses have neurons in their tentacles that allow them to keep moving even after being detached from their bodies. The suckers on their arms can maintain their gripping ability, and even when served in sesame oil, they can still grab into a person's throat, causing him or her to choke. It's said that around six people are killed by octopuses in this way each year, although few are likely aware of it. For instance, a young woman in South Korea stopped breathing after consuming a live octopus. She passed away in the hospital 16 days later. Doctors found a tentacle lodged in her throat, which ultimately led to her death. It's a strange story indeed. The girl's father discovered that his daughter had taken out a life insurance policy shortly before her death. Her boyfriend was the sole beneficiary of the policy and received $190,000. However, it was he who bought the ill-fated octopus, and he reported that the girl stopped breathing and passed out during a meal. He was initially accused of her death, but later acquitted. Maybe the octopus is the real culprit here. Another girl who's a vlogger remained unharmed, but a large and very much alive octopus attached itself to her face during a live broadcast. The girl was about to eat it when she ended up with a small cut on her face. 
In October 2023, an 82-year-old man suffered a heart attack after choking on a live octopus tentacle. He was rushed to the hospital, but didn't make it. These incidents happen annually in Korea, with only the most notable ones making headlines. It's no wonder that some non-Korean publications consider sanakji to be one of the most dangerous dishes in the world. But why do Koreans even eat live octopus? Well, it's simple. Octopuses, especially those that are live, are perceived as superfoods, so powerful that they can even get a sick cow back on its feet, according to a common Korean saying. Octopuses do indeed contain a lot of protein and other nutrients like taurine, iron, and calcium. However, just because they're alive doesn't make them more beneficial. It actually makes them more hazardous. Right now, fishermen are the main reason why most octopuses end up on our plates. Every year, around 91 million of them are caught globally although the reported weights differ depending on the source. In the UK alone, approximately 1,300 tons of octopuses are consumed annually, which is roughly 280,000 of these creatures. In 2022, the United Kingdom accounted for just 0.34% of the total global import of octopuses. Despite hundreds of tons of octopuses being caught from the water each year, most methods used for their capture are more makeshift than industrial, small boats, and traditional techniques very traditional indeed. In the Mexican states of Yucatan and Campeche, many fishermen use crabs attached to long bamboo poles to lure their catch. These days, they can only haul in a maximum of 44 pounds of octopuses per trip, compared to over 220 pounds in the past. This decline isn't because octopuses have developed a distaste for crab bait, rather it's a consequence of severely depleted populations. In Alaska and along the shores of Japan, they have a different approach. They use large capsules dropped from the sides of fishing boats to catch octopuses. These capsules are checked regularly, and the caught mollusks are brought onto the boat. This job can be really tough and risky. It's not for people who can't handle long hours and challenging conditions. How long the boat stays out on the water before coming back to shore depends on where it is and how many octopuses can be collected. And just to remind you, octopus numbers are dwindling. It's interesting that even fishermen who don't catch octopuses often find themselves dealing with them because octopuses are too clever. They're really good at problem solving, so they can figure out how to get into traps meant for crabs and other sea creatures. Fishermen set traps, and octopuses get inside and eat up everything the fishermen were planning to sell. Naturally, nobody's happy about that. This method allows octopuses to gain plenty of food without having to hunt for it. Thanks to their great memory, once they figure out how to open traps and where they're placed, they revisit them again and again. In Lower California, there are two commercially valuable octopus species caught using various methods. These include diving with scuba gear, using hooks, and traps. However, some illegal methods like using toxic substances such as bleach are still in use. Who on earth would even think of pouring bleach into the ocean, you might wonder? But fishermen actually do it. They pour bleach into areas where octopuses might be hiding, forcing them to come out. Naturally, this makes catching them easier, and the method is simple and cheap. But pouring bleach into the ocean? Chlorinated substances can cause significant harm, not just to octopuses, but also to other organisms in the vicinity. These compounds are carcinogenic and can damage the immune, reproductive, and nervous systems. They tend to build up in the fatty tissue of animals with their concentration rising as they move up the food chain. Eventually, going for a simple and cheap solution might result in contamination spreading everywhere, affecting people who eat local fish or shellfish. The situation is better off the coast of Brazil, about 45% of surveyed octopus hunters learn to fish alongside their parents or grandparents. They're not into fancy gear here. Local fishermen prefer traps for commercial fishing and a tool similar to iron rebar with a hook for artisanal fishing. This tool is quite popular with 79% of surveyed fishermen using it. Octopus Technologies has introduced innovative traps for commercial octopus fishing in Western Australia, which have quickly become the go-to method. Once an octopus is caught in these traps, it's shielded from predators, except for humans, of course. Research in the fishing industry indicates that octopus catches in Western Australia have surged by 400% following the adoption of these traps. See you later.